I call him Gamblor. Oh, we ain't gonna linger in Lalo when there's hot cash coming back. No way I'll just sit here when I know that there's hot cash coming back. Hot, hot cash. Don't want no easy money. You ever feel like Rockstar Games has become the thing that Grand Theft Auto used to parody? The excesses of runaway capitalism, cynical business practices, heartless, amoral business people. A lot of that has come under fire. Consumerism in America has been a big part of the satire of Grand Theft Auto, not in a subtle way either. Red Dead Online and GTA Online are the equivalent of that episode of The Office where Dwight opens up Hay Place, a place for hay, the theme park made just out of hay bales in the parking lot of the office, where every little element, every tiny aspect of the fun is charged for. And I think about that often when I look at a lot of modern video games, uh, this idea that they're like theme parks, that charge an entry fee to get in, but then subsequently charge more and more money to get the most out of the experience. And Red Dead Online, GTA Online, uh, coming from Rockstar, it just feels grimly poetic. Especially when you consider that they produce these games under the label of Take-Two Interactive, which is one of the most greedy publishers, headed up by one of the most greedy executives in Strauss Zelnick, a man who, who would probably throw a baby into a river for 20 bucks. Probably. I'm not saying he definitely will, I'm saying he probably has. I mean, he probably would, not has. He hasn't. Strauss Elnick hasn't thrown a baby. But I'm just saying if it was in the newspaper, Strauss Elnick throws babies in rivers for money, I wouldn't be surprised. That could be something you could parody in GTA, Rockstar, before you go ahead and do it. Anyway, there's a casino in GTA Online. <sighs> Welp. Welp. Welp! They went ahead and finally did it, did they? They finally just gave up the pretense, did they? They finally decided to cut straight to the effing chase and plop a casino smack dab in the middle of a video game. At a time where loot box regulation is a hot topic and stories of children being tricked into spending hundreds and thousands on microtransactions are getting wider news attention, Rockstar finally unleashed the Diamond Casino and Resort upon Grand Theft Auto on Line and you better believe real money can be spent in it. In a roundabout fashion, naturally. Yep, after the industry has faced credible and correct accusations of sticking gambling in their games via monetized randomization, Rockstar went ahead and put a literal casino with a literal gambling where literal money can be spent to literally gamble. Literally. It's so utterly brazen, one almost has to admire the sheer nerve. Of course you can't directly spend money on it. A lack of direct expenditure is how the industry has been able to get away with exploitative microtransactions for so long. Virtual currency creates degrees of separation between your wallet and a game publisher's coffers, reducing said publisher's accountability. And I would never use the term money laundering to describe virtual currency. I would never do that. That's not fair. I wouldn't do that. I don't even know why I'm bringing it up. Let's not start colloquially calling it money laundering just to be snidey. In GTA Online, you can spend your real dollars to buy the game's virtual dollars, which in turn can be spent in the casino. And these are genuine, bona fide gambling games, so much so that games in the casino are actually banned in countries where gambling laws are strict. In fact, shortly after the update went live, news broke that over 50 countries have these games blocked. Locked. This news should in no uncertain terms demonstrate that the lines between in-game gambling and real gambling have become so blurred they're singing song too. I mean, think about that. An update to a game has had to be severely restricted in many, many, many countries because it's far too much like real gambling to let stand. And people thought I was off my beautiful tits when I suggested that in-game gambling was getting out of hand. And here we are, a triple-A video game with a virtual casino plonked into it where you can spend real money on it, but you won't ever get a real payout. 
Some users report that they actually cannot spend money that they've purchased, they can only use money that they've earned in-game. This has led to a lot of confusion, a lot of argument, as most of the reporting on the issue says that yes, you can spend real money, but there are invariably some comments saying no, you can't. Due to the aforementioned regional blocking, there's a lot of confusion out there, but according to my research and my double and my triple checking, doing everything just shy of trying it myself, because screw spending my bloody money on microtransactions, it's looking like in certain regions you can spend real money, and in certain regions you can only spend the cash that you've earned explicitly in game. The best thing about microtransactions in video games is how simple it all is, isn't it? Of course, the usual excuses used to justify microtransactions have been liberally applied. It's optional, you don't have to spend real money, you can earn premium currency in-game. But nonetheless, we now have a real bloody casino in a so-called AAA video game where you can waste real cash on legit casino games. As I see it, there are three saving graces that could be used to defend the Diamond Casino, not that they all offer complete defense. First of all, Rockstar has a hard limit on how much you can actually spend at the casino in an effort to curb problem gambling. There's a hard cap limit and there are cooldowns to stop you spending and spending and spending and spending. That's more than some games out there are doing. Secondly, GTA is of course an M-rated game, rated, suitable for adults. This doesn't mean kids don't play it of course, but at least that's better than gambling mechanics in a game like FIFA, which is rated as suitable for children yet needs strict parental supervision due to its ability to scam children into cleaning out their parents' bank accounts. Seriously, I'm gonna keep banging that drum. At this point, FIFA requires more parental guidance than an M-rated game, which is explicit in its contents rather than unscrupulously insidious. And as such, FIFA should be rated accordingly. Electronic Arts, coward that it is, never comments on stories about kids overspending in FIFA, instead offering spending control walkthroughs to reporters that detail how parents can stop their kids wasting money on digital wagering. It's almost as if children shouldn't be around gambling, huh? It's almost as if gambling is regulated for a reason, huh? Where was I? Oh, oh right, yes, I was detailing the Diamond Casino saving graces. I only did two, which was the, uh, the M rating and the limit. The third one is that unlike loot boxes, which create an aesthetic distance between themselves and traditional gambling, a literal casino with literal gambling is about as honest as a luck-based monetized gaming gets. You really can't get much more upfront and blatant than actual slot machines, but nonetheless, this is something I'm gonna be very wary of, because if there's one thing we've learned about the AAA game industry, in all our years of criticism, it's that when a successful monetization method appears in one company's game, the other sharks smell blood and want a slice of the action. And if other game publishers decide to jump on board the casino idea, you can expect them to iteratively make the idea worse and worse and greedier and greedier. I'm inclined to agree with what Ollie Welsh said in a Eurogamer article when he said GTA's casino isn't the worst of gambling in games but it puts it in perspective. Even if we want to say it's not the worst out there, if we want to say it's not quite as insidious as a loot box, in its complete lack of subtlety it really does put a sharp focus on the long-running problem of in-game gambling mechanics. Because while there is a stunning wow factor in seeing an actual casino knocking about, it's not doing anything a lot of modern so-called AAA video games haven't been doing for years already. It's giving you the ability to spend real money on a luck-based outcome with no real financial payout. It's just got significantly less pretentious branding. And if you do want to say that the Diamond Casino is not the worst out there, that provides some damning context for existing loot boxes if you're saying a literal casino has less predatory gambling in it than a loot box. And you've got to believe the EAs and the Activisions of the world are looking at the Diamond Casino with keen interest, because of course it's never enough. DLC wasn't enough, season passes weren't enough, multiple collector's editions per game weren't enough, microtransactions weren't enough. Not even loot boxes are enough for these friggin' parasites, why not just go for the whole round juicy hog and start throwing virtual casinos into games as well? After all the ways GTA 
GTA Online has already made money to be the most profitable game in history, Rockstar and Take-Two Interactive have proven that there truly is no limit to what they'll try and make money off of. I know people consider a slippery slope argument fallacious, but with the game industry, every slope we've seen has arrived pre-oiled. Is a slippery slope argument fallacious when slipping down slopes is an observable pattern of behaviour? Few companies may be so upfront as to have literal casinos in their games, but it's clear now that such a thing is not off the table. And with many companies still going all in on loot boxes, whether or not these games have casinos in them more and more starts to become a semantic matter. Gambling has been a part of in-game monetization now for years, Rockstar's just admitting it in ways other companies haven't dared. Virtual slot machines and casino games are unsurprisingly rife on mobile platforms, the realm of amoral business plans from where most AAA publishers get their horrible ideas. There are games on mobile phones that are little more than slot machines without real financial payout. They'll certainly take real money in exchange for virtual cash, but then you spend that virtual cash on a virtual slot machine to win more virtual cash to spend on more virtual slot machines and that's it. There are no ends to which you're working, no goal, no point. You're doing it simply for the thrill of the pretty colours and the positive reinforcement of winning. And it's that positive reinforcement which the game industry has steadily been using more and more to con money out of people who have already spent money buying a game in the first place. Even worse, we've seen examples of games deliberately designed to be less rewarding, less enjoyable, less playable in order to falsify the value prospect of the microtransactions. A premium replacement for the satisfying feelings games used to give you as part of the expected base package. At this point, and if things are only going to get less fun but get more and more casino-like, you might as well just go to a real bloody casino. I never agreed with the people who smugly said, just learn to play a real guitar instead of playing Guitar Hero. But if you're getting into in-game gambling for the rush of it all, just get your ass to the genuine casinos if you can. Because I think there are things you can do at a casino to make it more rewarding and more lucrative than some of the AAA rubbish on the market. Am I about to say casinos are better than video games? No, heavens no. I'm just as against saying that as I am against saying virtual currency is money laundering. I would never say that casinos are better than video games. They're just better than Electronic Arts' video games. On a serious note, obviously real life gambling has serious risk attached to it and its psychological tricks and trappings are no less potentially addictive than any microtransaction. But just follow your old pal Jim Sterling's advice, be careful and stick to my game plan and you'll find a casino way more fulfilling than a goddamn piece of crap loot box. A casino employs the same traps, the same lures, the same psychological manipulation as a loot box fueled video game. I mean that's exactly what these video games are emulating. By the same token, they also provide the equivalent endorphin rush, the same bright lights and pretty colours, plus you might win some actual money instead of a frigging pretend hat for a pretend video game character that has no monetary value in a game that'll be worthless the moment the annual sequel comes out. You see, the video game industry protects itself from existing laws with the argument that what you win in FIFA or Overwatch or Call of Duty has no official real-world monetary value. Ignoring secondary markets, there's no official way to make back the money you spend on loot boxes. The fact you can't win money protects game publishers from the law, for now, but also makes the case that loot boxes are actively worse than gambling, at least from the perspective of value. In a video game loot box, you can't win anything that even the publisher will admit is worth a damn. And on top of that, they fix the odds and can change the odds at any time. Couldn't do that if you play blackjack! I seriously, and, and this isn't facetious at all, I do not encourage gambling in anybody, but if you were to ask me what's worth spending money on, FIFA or a casino, GTA's Diamond Casino or an actual casino, well, I for one could personally, only speaking for myself, I could stand to have a wet weekend at the Beau Rivage. But if you join me on a wet weekend at the Beau Rivage, you gotta make the casino work for you. And that's the tricky part, since again, gambling addiction, desperation to 
handle debt. These are all real issues, and if you're affected by those, do not come with me for a wet weekend at the Beau Rivage, ever. Just stay home and play a video game after you research the video game to make sure it's not one that will try and psychologically manipulate cash out of you and play on your problems. Because that's where we're at now with games, you gotta research them to make sure that they're not gonna try and prey on you. But if you handle it, give yourself an upper spending limit, I recommend 60 bucks, it's the price of a video game, and you can spend more time having fun with that than you can with most modern garbage live service games, then you're very welcome to join me. And then we make the casino work for us. I mentioned blackjack, don't actually do that, don't, don't bother with that. The first thing you do is you go to the buffet and you load that plate up with crab. I say crab because the casino's out here in MS are by the beach and they got that good seafood action. Whatever else happens with your day, it's already been a damn good trip because you got yourself on the outside of some sweet ass buffet crab. What you then need to do is find the bar. The bar has little slot machines built into it and lots of old ladies at those machines. It's just a big old pile of sweet lovely old grannies as you take your own seats at the bar. Here the drinks are of course straight up effing free provided you're using the machine. So you put in the minimum cash each time, press the button, win or lose. Yes, I think I'll have another Jack Daniels, thank you very much sir. And nobody said you had to press that button fast take your time and you'll have plenty of fun spending money smashing a button to make colors happen like you could in many triple a video games now the drinks are of course free for a reason they want you sloshed so that your senses are impaired and you may be tempted to spend more money so you gotta be on the ball a bit and you've got to keep some important math in mind and the math here is simple so long as you leave the casino with more booze inside you than money you put in the machine you never won't profit and i all stagger out of the casino with a belly full of profit as well as crab sweet buffet crab oh the crab this game plan is nothing new nothing i've innovated i mean fair play to the grannies they got in there first and they're getting hammered this game plan is codified as an old gambler's trick called the crabby granny drinky winky obviously i'm being somewhat facetious though that really is the low stakes way i like to enjoy a wet weekend at the bow but the more the lines blur between in-game gambling and real gambling the higher harder a case games have to make in order to justify why we shouldn't all just go to a casino and eat crab. Electronic Arts ain't never given me no seafood, and unlike with an EA game, kids aren't actually allowed to come into a casino with their parents' credit cards and spend all their money, which is a nice little bonus. Almost as if gambling is regulated, huh? Almost as if spending money on wages is something kids shouldn't be near, huh? 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 In any case, the point is this, an actively monetized casino has no frigging place in a video game. Sure, an in-game casino that uses in-game currency only, no premium trash, is something I can get behind. I'm all for the casinos in Dragon Quest. Those are fun and free of financial fuss and ethical grey areas. But this slow, steady, encroaching blurring of the lines between real gambling and virtual gambling, it needs to stop. It seriously, all humour, facetiousness aside, needs to stop. Because the predatory monetization of the so-called AAA game industry has already gotten way too out of hand. Way too too manipulative, way too close to genuinely damaging. And this is all without literal virtual casinos coming into play. The Diamond Casino and Resort of GTA Online may have enough caveats that people find it defensible. It may have two or three saving graces that a game like FIFA doesn't, but it still reeks of fish and not the good kind you'd get from a wet weekend at the bow. If games take cues from Rockstar and we start seeing this nonsense pop up more, I'm out. I'd rather go where there's booze, crab and a coastal view. Plus the bow is right near Aunt Jenny's and let me tell you about Aunt Jenny's. It's all you can eat, shrimp, chicken or catfish. Choose one, you only need the one. They bring them buggers out quick, hot and good and they are amazing. They are fantastic. Plus the menu has this note on it that says shrimp lovers must pay shrimp prices. And I don't know what that means but it sounds really sinister. But I appreciate an element of danger to the otherwise welcoming and cosy atmosphere of Aunt Jenny's. Anytime I go to Biloxi and I don't go to Aunt Jenny's at least once, that's a wasted trip. That's a waste of time. What are you even doing there? Video games are a racket. They have managed to find workarounds through virtual currency, through valueless prizes, to put gambling in their games without a gambling license. And as we saw in the UK, uh, they are struggling 
to find a way to regulate this stuff because of these little workarounds that put them just out of arm's reach of the law. The UK Gambling Commission said that under their current legal definition of gambling, loot boxes don't count. But there is pressure there from the Commission itself to look into expanding, coming up with new regulations. And again, this is all stuff that I warned the industry would come. Because there is only so far you can take the idea of unregulated gambling before uh, politicians get interested, before, uh, you know, outside influences are, are looking at it and thinking, well, how come they're managing to get away with uh, getting gambling licenses? Why are they getting away with uh, not giving governments a cut if they're in places where gambling is used in that way? And of course, the biggie for many watchdogs will be why are children allowed to get into this crap? Uh, but children or not, this stuff is still gambling and I will always call it gambling even if the legal, the strict legal definitions do not uh, because at least colloquially and psychologically and technically it is all gambling, you're putting up money for a random prize that's a wager, that's a gamble and it's not on it's not on. I realize I bang about, you know, I bang on about this so much. I realize I go on and on and on and I, I keep, and many points I do re-emphasize over and over again. But that's because it's pertinent and it's important and it should be driven into people's skulls. The game industry is running a racket and it's getting away with it because it's it's like, a, it's, it's basically acting like Tom in an episode with the dog where they draw that line uh, to work out where the leash that's holding the dog in place ends. They can draw this line, they can taunt the dog so long as they don't cross it, and the dog's just snapping and can't get to them. But in the cartoons, the leash eventually breaks. And the more they antagonize, the more they take the liberal piss, the greater the chances of the leash snapping and the dog taking their head off, and I would like to see that at this point. I've always said, I've, I've always said that I don't push for regulation, but now I don't care. They are running a racket and they're loving it, and I'm done. I, I'm done worrying about the, the implications of them getting in trouble for it. They deserve to get in trouble for it. This shit can't continue. They are taking the absolute PP. I don't know why I decided to undermine everything I said by going PP at the end, but there you go. I'm the only one brave enough to say PP on YouTube, so thank God for me.